Hey everybody and welcome back. We're now reached section 9-7, which is the final section of chapter 9. So we'll get some good old chapter 9 review coming up in the next couple classes. But today, Thursday, um, we're just going to start thinking right away. You guys are going to help me think through finding the areas of some generic triangles. Okay, so these generic triangles are going to be labeled, the bases will be labeled probably as B and their corresponding altitudes probably going to be labeled as H. And then we'll modify them a little bit. So we're going to start thinking about formulas right away. And hopefully you're engaged. Hopefully you're ready to think. Hopefully you're more like this kid on the left side here as you sit here at home uh, watching this lecture. Or like this nice individual here on the right side here. Um, the guy in the middle looks a little bored. Hopefully you're not bored already. Okay, I'll try to do my best. It's, it's hard um, to, uh, to get you into this here. Okay, anyways, section 9-7. Before we go to those uh, areas of generic coming up with some formulas and proving some things uh, immediately, we'll talk about what section 9-7 is. It's areas of similar figures, okay? So areas of similar figures. We've spent all this time figuring out the areas of particular shapes. Now, what conclusions can we draw between a certain shape and a shape that's similar to it? Are there connections there in terms of its area? Are there uh, connections there in terms of its circumference if they're a circle or of perimeter? Okay, so we'll have to look at mathematically some connections here. So I've expanded a bit on this section. It's not just going to be areas of similar figures. It's going to be areas of not so similar figures. So you'll get to a uh, formula for uh, the area of a figure compared to a similar figure of a certain scale factor difference. What does that tell us about the area difference between the two or area ratio? Um, but that shouldn't be confused with um, shapes that may share some things in common, but not be similar to one another. Okay, and we'll see that in our very first example. So uh, let's jump into it. Let's see if we uh, kind of can, can, can figure out what this is all about and uh, jump in lesson right now. Best of luck and I'll see you around the other side. All right, people, let's do it right away. Let's go ahead and drop in that generic figure I said we would be working with right away, a generic triangle. Here we have a base and we have a height labeled and we have some A and C right here. So these are just some other size that uh, we might be interested in a little bit later. Um, okay, so what you're gonna help me out with here is you're gonna find the area of the triangle below in terms of A, B, C, and H. So to get this area here, all right, well, what do we have? We only have one height, we only have one altitude, so we must choose this altitude and this base to come up with what the area of this generic triangle is. And did you get it? Did you get it? That's right, I'm sure you got it here. It is, the area of this triangle is gonna be a half times this side times its corresponding altitude, okay? So just area equals one half the H. Now you might be wondering why are we doing this right now? I know that this is the formula. If I was given this as the base and, base and this is the height, this is how I got the area, is because I wanna compare it to a shape that is not quite similar to this shape here on the left here and see what kind of happens. So um, this is the next problem I'll give you, another thing to come up with. All right, so we have that as a formula for this generic triangle. What if we changed our generic triangle? So what if we changed this generic triangle and we doubled one of the dimensions? Just one of the dimensions. So we doubled one side of the figure. And we're not going to change that side's altitude. We're not going to change the altitude. Just going to change the side length. I try to do this by stretching out the shape. Instead of this being B here for the side length here, let's make it 2B. So let's make it this length here, if we had a compass and we swung our compass, right? This would be length B and this would be another length B. So this, uh, all of a sudden, the bottom of this, uh, of this triangle, if it's oriented this way, we can call it the bottom, um, is twice as long as this one. So now this one's 2B. What does that do to its new area? Okay, so we doubled this one side. And what I'm just clarify here, I'm not saying double all sides here. So this side that's length distance A, notice here, it's gotten a little bit longer, but it hasn't actually doubled. This side length here, C, it's gotten longer. It actually hasn't doubled too. If you had a compass, you'd be able to verify that. This is about, C is about 60% of this side right here. So H remains the same. So if we double one of the sides, we doubled the base of this, but we have the same altitudes. These are congruent to one another. Might as well just tick them as congruent. What does that tell us about the area? How does the area change? 
Well, I'm hoping you do this as your formula. Well, area would equal one half base times height, and base is 2b here. So our area of this would be one half times by 2b times by h. So by doubling just one side, our area is going to double, is going to double. So our whole area doubles. So we didn't change the scale factor between these two triangles because, are these triangles similar to one another? No, they're not similar to one another. You don't have this consistent one to two proportion from this side to this side or one to two ratio from this side to this side and this side to this side and this side to this side. So the ratio, uh, the ratio of sides is not in proportion, but the area does have a one to two ratio because we just doubled one of the dimensions, one of the sides. So to summarize this down here, generalization. Uh, so we're not talking similar triangles yet, right? We're just talking about if we change one of the sides, if we stretch out one of the sides, that'll of course stretch out a couple of the other sides, but not into the same magnitude. Um, so when one side of a triangle changes by a factor of, and I'm gonna put this variable down here, K, the variable K typically stands for scale factor. And this isn't really exactly scale factor right here because we're just stretching this out to, to by a factor of two X. Um, so um, when one side of a triangle changes by a factor of k, we'll still just use k because k is used for um, transforming things by a certain um, multiplier. When one side changes by a factor of k, the whole area, so we just need to do one side and we get the whole area to increase by the same factor, by k. Ch multiply this b, get it to two times bigger, your area is going to be times two bigger than what it originally was. If we notice here, one half base times height times by two would equal base times height. Double on one side doubles the area. So the areas above would be in a one to two ratio because one side changed, the area uh, would change by that same factor. So one side's twice as large now, so the area is twice as large as what it originally was. A reminder on this too, just in case you didn't see it, in case you didn't hear, in case you're like, okay, I got this now for similar figures, because no, you don't. Um, are these triangles similar? Heck no, let me emphasize it. I can't emphasize enough. These are not similar triangles. Only one of the sides doubled. Okay, the other side didn't double and the altitude didn't change at all, right? Didn't change at all. So I know what you're thinking now. Isn't this section, isn't it about uh, areas of similar figures? We should look into that. So um, we're gonna deal with the same generic rectangle that we had in uh, the very first part here. And it says find the area of the triangle below in terms of A, B, C, and H. Well, you already did that. You have area equals one half base times height. So you're probably thinking, I guess uh, where this is going here, right? We're gonna find a similar figure this time. So now consider a triangle where all sides have increased by a factor of two. So these triangles would be similar by S, S, S similarity because all three sides would be in a two to one ratio. So all three sides would have a proportional, all three corresponding side, sets of sides would have a consistent proportional relationship. So let's draw that in so you can kind of see it, right? These are similar triangles by SSS. Draw it in, there we go. So we have it drawn in, we've doubled 2B and then we've also doubled 2A, right? So this is if we swung a compass over here and measured this length and then we would be able to verify that this is the same as A and then this is the same as A. So this would be 2A, okay? So these are similar figures here. What does this tell us about area? Looking at the last slide, is this triangle bigger than the triangle that we saw when we just doubled one of the sides? Well, obviously, just visually we see that, okay? So instead of, instead of just doubling one of the sides, we doubled all sides, is there a mathematical connection that we can prove right now? Let's figure out the area. Area equals what? One half base times height. So if you're calculating that right now on your own, let's see if you got it right. One half base times height. It would be one half times by, the base is 2b, and the height is 2h, okay? So 2b times 2h would be 4bh, and times by a half would be 2bh. So we'd go, be going from area of 1 half bh to area equaling 2bh. So that is a pretty significant difference. Even though our side lengths only change by a factor of times two, and that is our scale factor. 
k equals 2. I'm going to put times 2 right there, and just you see it. But k typically is equal to 2. So we're changing my scale factor of 2. What happened to the areas, the ratio of the areas? How did the ratio of the areas change? As we went from this triangle number 1 to triangle number 2, how did it change? Well, originally our area was 1 half bh. Now we're at to 2 bhs here. Our area is changed by a factor of 4. A factor of 4. So 1 half bh, if we divided that by 2, right, 1 half divided by 2 would be 1 fourth. And then the b's would cancel out, right? If we set up a ratio as a fraction, we could do this. Uh, the ratio of this triangle, okay, so this triangle's area is 1 half bh to the, uh, this triangle's area, generic area, which would be 2 bh. So 1 half bh to 2 bh. And then we can start canceling out to start simplifying our uh, ratio here. So 1 half divided by 2 would give us 1 fourth. So this would be in, these two triangles would be in a 1 to 4 ratio. So what the heck happens, right? What the heck happens? Well, our area increased by a factor of 4. Increased by a factor of 4 because what ends up happening is not only did the base double increase by times 2, the height increased by times 2. So maybe you're thinking now, uh, what does 4 have to do with 2? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. Start to think about this. Try to extrapolate this to other similar figures or other similar triangles. Just think about triangles right now. What if... For instance, this were increasing by a factor of 3. All of these increase by a factor, a scale factor of 3. What would that tell us about the area? Here, just quickly do it in your heads. Quickly do it in your heads. Well, instead of a 2 here, it would be a 3 and a 3 right here. So it would be increasing by a factor of 9. You triple the side lengths, your area gets 9 times bigger. What does 9 have to do with 3? What does 4 have to do to 2? Well, let's do one more. What if all sides changed by a factor of 4? How would that affect area from the original triangle? Well, what's 4 times 4? 4 times 4 is 16, and this would have a 16 bh and then a half, so we'd have 8 bh, which would be 16 times larger than the original triangle. What does 16 have to do with 4? And I'm hoping you got it here. Right, and I'm hoping you got it here. Now, I'll actually I'll go back one little bit here. But the number, the amount that the area is going to increase by from the original triangle to whatever the resulting triangle is, is going to be a factor of k squared. Because k here equals two, our triangle got uh, uh, two times bigger in terms of the side lengths. Um, but the area got four times bigger because two squared is four. So if our scale factor were 3, our triangle would get 9 times bigger. 4, our triangle would get 16 times bigger. 5, our triangle would get 25 times bigger in terms of area. To summarize that up, we got this here. Boom, generalization. When the whole figure changes by a factor of, and we'll go with the scale factor again, k, the whole area increases by a factor of k squared. K squared. And that gets us to our theorem. If the scale factor of two similar figures is a to b, okay, so like in the, in the last example is two to one, right, two to one, uh, then the ratio of perimeters is still a to b, right, still a to b. Let's go back for a second, right? This would still be in a two to one ratio for perimeters, right, because 2a plus 2c plus 2b would be the perimeter of this one, and that would be exactly twice as big. So 2a plus 2c plus 2b would be twice as large as a plus c plus b, which we'll see in a second. So our perimeters would still be in the ratio that the scale factor is. A 2 to 1 scale factor would yield us perimeters that are in a 2 to 1 ratio. But as we just talked about, as we just saw, the ratios would be in the, of uh, the areas would be the ratio of squares of uh, the scale factor. All right, check it on out. We have it on this slide right here so we can see it nice and clearly. Proved right here for the perimeter part. So this is what I was telling you earlier on the last slide, that um, the perimeter of the larger triangle here going to be twice as large as the perimeter of the shorter triangle if our scale factor is times 2. Because 2a plus 2b plus 2c, that is equivalent to, if we factor it out of 2 there, 2 times by the quantity a plus b plus c, 
And A plus B plus C is just the perimeter of this generic triangle right here. So A plus B plus C, that, those two factors would cancel out and we'd be left with two over one as the perimeter of the larger triangle. Let's think about area now, right? Let's just see what the book has to say about area. So this is the tricky part. This is why I wanted to spend this video and spending so long leading up to this because a lot of people mess this up. Uh, many people think that the ratio of areas would also have to be two to one. Hey, you know what? The size of the triangle is just doubling, right? Because we're doubling all the sides. So that means we must be taking up that much uh, of the plane, right? That much uh, area is contained, is, is bounded by the sides. No, it's actually increasing by two squared to one. If it's a, in a two, two to one ratio, it would be two squared to technically one squared ratio, which would just simplify to four to one. Area of larger triangle, and then this is what we just talked about on the very, very last slide. This would go for kind of funkier things here. So let's think about it like a harder example. What if this were, instead of being A, this were 4A, 4C, and 4B, and we're just increasing a little bit, right? We're just increasing the size of this a little bit. Let's say we're increasing this by 25%. So we're going to a four to five ratio, right? Four to five ratio. So this drawing is obviously not to scale. This is just an example. What if it were this instead? If we have similar figures that are in a four to five ratio, what would that tell us about areas? So to get that, instead of this here, it would just have to be the areas. If we're gonna use the formula, and we'll cross that out for a second, right? The area of the small triangle, to the area of the large triangle, well, they would just be in a four to five ratio. So four to, sorry, it would just be in a four squared to five squared ratio. Okay, so this would be four squared over five squared. So a 16 to 25 ratio. And that one can't be reduced. That's actually the uh, most simplified that fraction can be. Um, so that saves us some time, right? We could actually prove it out here by actually looking at what uh, the base form, uh, base times height formula would give us, right? It would be one half four b times by four h, and then one half. Uh, oops, sorry, this is the larger one. Would be five on top. Five area of the larger triangle. So this is smaller triangle, larger triangle. So you'd have to invert this to get a large triangle, smaller, a smaller triangle. So um, one half five B times by five H, uh, two compared to the smaller triangle would be four B times by four H. So remember the B's and H's all cancel. The one halves even cancel. You're left with five times five over four times four, which would be 25 over four. If you're getting a large triangle, to smaller triangle, area of large triangle, small triangle. And that's it. Hey, check out this problem. This is a good one. Triangle, uh, trapezoid A, B, C, D is below. Um, and with trapezoids, if you introduce the diagonals, you get some similar triangles. Not all these triangles here are gonna have a similar, corresponding similar triangle to it. Um, but some of these are similar triangles, at least the pair are similar. So you're going to find the ratio of these areas here. Um, this is kind of a tricky problem. You got to think about what the altitudes are telling you. So don't just think about the bases of the triangles that you know. Think about what you know about the altitudes. So this one definitely takes a few minutes to think through. So definitely pause the video. Maybe draw it on out. Try to think through it. I would actually say this would probably spend like five minutes on this. Literally just pause this video, spend five minutes on it. On it. If you can get it, great. If not, you can realize it's kind of hard and you kind of need to pay attention to the explanation because it's important that you guys know how to do this one. Ready, set, go. And uh, I'll reconvene with you guys in a few minutes. Pause the video. Best of luck. And I'm back, let's do this. So we got this set up here, we got trapezoid A, B, C, D, we gotta find the ratio of areas of this triangle and this triangle down here. And we also find need to find the ratio of C, O, D, which is this top triangle right here, to D, O, A, which is the triangle it's adjacent to over here. 
So let's start with what I've kind of labeled up already. So COD, this one COD right here, it's actually similar to AOB. I'm hoping that you got that. So I'm going to draw in the similarity symbol here, and I already have it pasted onto these two triangles here. So actually, any trapezoid, any trapezoid, you're going to have this connection. So you're going to have a lot of trapezoid problems in your homework tonight because a trapezoid, the bases are parallel to one another. So um, if we draw in diagonals here, if you have parallel bases, then these two angles would be congruent to one another because they would be alternate interior angles cut by a transversal between parallel lines. So they would have to be congruent. Same thing over here. This angle here, angle D, congruent to angle B over here. Angle A, B, D, congruent to angle C, D, O. So two angles congruent, two corresponding angles congruent, and two triangles, they are similar by AA. We also have vertical angles there, so vertical angles are congruent. So we're totally sure that these uh, two uh, triangles are similar to one another. Okay, so for this, we're going to be able to use our shortcut for finding the ratio of areas of between the two triangles. So COD, uh, this side, DC, is a corresponding side. Notice here, CD, we have a congruent symbol here and a congruent symbol there. So CD corresponds to AB corresponds to AB. So these are corresponding sides. So their perimeters, right, perimeters would be in the ratio of um, 5 to 7. If we're going COD to AOB, it would be 5 to 7. But areas are different, and that's what we're being asked about. So the area of, uh, ratio between the two is not going to be this just like, you know, this is only like a 30% difference. Five to, five to seven, it's gonna be a little bit more pronounced than that because our area ratio is going to be five squared over seven squared. So 25 to 49 ratio. So you might be wondering why we're studying this, why we're looking at this. I think this is actually pretty interesting here. Notice this is a length of five, this is a length of seven. That's not a super big difference, right? If we look in terms of numbers, that's less than a 50% difference, right? 50% of five would be uh, 2.5, and then, so it's not even 7.5, it's not even 50% greater uh, up here, okay? But, oops, I should have put a 49 there, but our areas pretty much double, right? Pretty much double. Even though this only increases side lengthwise by a little bit, our area is almost double. So this is a 25 to 49 ratio. That's pretty close to a one to two ratio in terms of areas. Okay, so changing the side length, changing the scale factor, even by a little bit, is going to have a much bigger impact on area than it really would be on perimeter. So that is number one. So why is that again? Why is that again? Well, why that is, is actually going to help us out a little bit on part two, the ratio of areas of triangle COD and, and triangle DOA, is because, remember, if we're changing the scale factor, that means all sides change in length, but also the altitudes would have a similar 5 to 7 ratio. So what I'm going to label here, and I'll label this as 5H. I want to call this the height of this triangle because we know that this is side length of five uh, for a base. So we don't know exactly how tall this, um, this height is. So I'm going to let it be 5H. If this is 5H, then the corresponding altitude here in this similar triangle would have to be seven fifths larger, okay? Or 7H. H. This would be in a five to seven ratio, right? Five to seven ratio. So the area of this down here, we remember, we don't, don't know what H stands for, but it would be 1 half 7 times 7H. So it would be um, 49H over 2. <laughs> and this area here would be 25H over 2. So if we simplified it, we would get this 25 to 49 ratio. Um, and that goes for all the sides, too. And I'm going to label these up here, and I might change the... Um, uh, what we see here in a second, I might relieve the answer, but I'll change what we see here in a second. Uh, but that goes for all these sides here. These would all, if this were 5x, then its corresponding side over here would be 7x in length. If this side here were 5y in length, yeah, we don't know exactly how long COO is, so we'll just assign it a variable, we'll assign it 5y. This would have to be 7y because it would be 7 fifths longer than this side right here. So that goes through all sides. So you might be wondering why I labeled that all off. What is the next problem? What is the next problem dealing with? Well, the next problem has to do with triangle DOA. 
And triangle DOA is this triangle over here. And it's gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare that to the triangle we talked about in part one, COD, right here. So, looking at this, what do we know about AOD or DOA? Um, we don't know that it for sure it's not similar to this triangle right here. You can just visually, we can just rule that out pretty quickly. They're not similar to one another. Um, but we actually have this information that I just filled in. So there's a kind of a lot of stuff. It's kind of messy right here. I might erase some of it so that you can see it a little bit more clearly. So now I'm just showing this. And this is what I just talked about, the logic of, uh, of part one. So this top triangle is similar to the bottom triangle. We know that these are not similar to one another. And that would mean that all the side lengths would have to be in a five to seven ratio. So again, we don't know what the length of this side is, but it's a five to seven ratio with this side. So if we let this be five X, this would have to be seven X here. If we define this length as five Y, we give it a variable. Again, if we don't know the side length, we can give it a variable. Let's give it five Y. This would have to be seven Y. So pause the video right now if you didn't get part two. Part two, I think, is uh, always when our data comes back from our final exams and tests. This is always a very hard question. So pause the video, look at it, and see if you can figure out what the ratio of areas are now between triangle COD and DOA. Because uh, a little bit tricky, but the way it's labeled up now, you should have that aha moment and uh, see if you can figure it out. Okay, pause the video, ready, set, go, see if you can figure it out. Did you get it? What's the key connection here? How do you do this? Two ways you can do this, but what I'm gonna do is show you the answer. This is how you do problems like this going on here. I'm drawing this in. Oop, what did I just draw in? It's a perpendicular coming from this vertex right here, D, to this side here, AO, AO. So the height of this triangle, the height of, uh, of triangle AOD um, is given by this perpendicular here. Okay, so this area here in terms of the variables we see in front of us is one half seven y times by h. What does this tell us about this triangle up here? Okay, this triangle up here. So d is a vertex of triangle ADO, so we're allowed to drop a perpendicular in here and we can use the side opposite that vertex to be as the base in the area of a triangle formula. Can we do that for triangle? TOC as well, triangle COD. Well, is D a vertex of triangle COD? Yeah, it definitely is, right? We see a D here, we see a D here. We can definitely use the vertex D to find a height of this triangle. So what this height would be, would be the height for this side right here. So this would be the base of triangle COD, and this would be the altitude we would use. Remember, the altitude just has to be the perpendicular to the line containing the side of, uh, of the triangle. So if you have an obtuse triangle like you will in these trapezoid problems, then your height that goes for this triangle right here, okay, so if I drew H over here, it might look more like the height, right? H is, H is about this high, um, but really this is how you, you, you draw the, uh, the height of this here, okay? So the area of this top triangle right here in terms of the variables we see, and I'm gonna get rid of the B because that's, that's part of the area formula. It would be one half base, so it would be one half five y times by h versus one half seven y times by h. So one half, we're gonna do COD first, one half times by five y times by h, and that's over one half, and then the base here is seven y times by h. And we can get our area ratios between this triangle and that triangle because they share a height in common. The heights cancel out when we're doing our ratios. The y's cancel out and the one halves cancel out. And look at that, we have our answer. This would be in a five to seven ratio. So this is sort of that example uh, that I showed you at the beginning to get you thinking about here. If we have some triangles where one of the key dimensions is slightly different, but the other key dimension is the same, okay? So here we're going from a base of a triangle being 5y to a base of a triangle being 7y without changing the, the other dimension that's using the area formula, okay? So you change either base or height 
Okay, so we just changed the bases here. That's gonna change the ratio of the areas by the same amount that we changed the, the bases by, okay? So the ratio of the two bases is gonna be the same as the ratio of the areas if only the bases changed, right? The heights didn't change here. So that's the difference between ratio of areas of similar figures is that both the heights and the base change by that scale factor and the situation where only one of the two changes. The height doesn't change, but the base change. So that's gonna change your, your area by but whatever the base changed by. It's not gonna change it by any sort of squaring or anything like that. So without further ado, let's uh, check into this one right here. So this um, is a little bit of oral practice. I used an oral practice class. So tell me about this one here, right? A lot of people can get confused when they get to this on homework. Hopefully it's not confusing for you. Somebody explain this one to me. Um, we're looking at triangle one, two, and three. And ooh, we have a base length, or actually a side length of four, side length of four there, side length of seven there. So if you know we're in the class, you weren't really paying attention to this too too much, you might have trouble with this. I'm asking this orally here. Somebody explain to me. I'm gonna call somebody and roll a die. Why the ratio of the areas of triangle one to two is not this? Okay, so area of one to two. Tell me why it's not four squared to six squared. So which would be 16 over six and reduced to four. Why is this not in a four to nine area ratio? They have the same H. Okay, so we're only changing in these two triangles, only really this one dimension changes in a four to six ratio. Uh, the heights didn't change in a four to six ratio. Our heights, our height is this. This is how we would draw the altitude for this triangle and this triangle and this triangle because we're going from a vertex to a line containing one of the sides. So the area of this would be one half four H, one half six H and one half seven H. So these would be in a four to six to seven ratio. Okay, so the actual ratios of triangles one and two would be four to six and we'd have to simplify that and that would just be a two to three ratio this one here was that they have same H. Alrighty, last problem, and uh, this is section 7-9, group work. So this should be some group work just from the uh, homework or classwork. I don't know if it's on the homework, but give it a shot. Pause the video. We'll review in just a minute. Ready, set, go. All right, how'd you do? Some interesting observations right here. One thing that I wanna point out is that, uh, one thing if you did this all correctly here, uh, area of triangle two and area of triangle four. So the two triangles that do not contain a base of the trapezoid, they actually have the same area. And that's something that is a uh, theorem that isn't written down in the book, but it's something that you know for sure because you can mathematically prove it, and we'll talk through it in a second. The area of triangle two, angle triangle four, is is the same area, um, so they take up the same amount of space. So really, the only differences here are going to be the top and bottom ones in terms of figuring out what our ratio is going to be, and that's the very first one here. Thirteen uh, A was one and three, so one and three are in a six to twelve ratio. So I did all the work out here. I did six squared over twelve squared. So I just took my bases and squared them and compared that using the ratio. And that gets to one fourth. One pro tip right here, the way you could have done that a lot faster and what I really recommend you do is that it's six squared over 12 squared, that's good and all, but you could have just taken the simplified ratio, 
right? Six to 12 is the same as one to two, and then you could have taken that and just squared both. And that would have just been a little bit faster. You probably would make fewer mistakes there if you're good at reducing fractions. Um, do it at the beginning and then square them, and then you'll know your answer is pretty darn simplified. Uh, one and two, of course, would be in a one to two ratio, because again here, that our side lengths would be in a six to 12 ratio. So this would have to be six X, and our congruence angles would be here and here. So that means that this side corresponds to that side in these similar triangles. So this is 6x right here. This is going to have to be 12x right here. And they share the same altitude. They share the same altitude. H is the same for this 6x base here as it is for this 12x base right here. So can't really see the 12 too well. I'll try to redraw it. Um, so that just tells us here that um, 1 half 12x would be 6x, uh, 6x h would be the uh, area here, and then 1 half 6x h would be the area here. So 3x uh, h would be the area here. So 6x h is twice as big as, as 3x h. So it would be in a 1 to 2 ratio. Remember, just one side, one dimension of your triangle changes, um, then your area is going to change by that uh, factor if the altitude remains the same, if the other dimension, right, h is unaffected. Um, same thing here on uh, number four. Same thing on comparing triangles one and four. This side here, because it has this angle which corresponds to this angle, this side of the triangle up here would be, we could call it 6y, this would be in a 6 to 12 ratio here because they are corresponding parts of similar triangles. So they are in that 1 to 2 proportion with the rest of the sides. Have the same altitude. So if this is the H of this, these second pair of triangles here, this would still be in a 1 to 2 um, uh, ratio here. Uh, and finally, if this is in a 1 to 2 ratio with, with uh, this triangle to that triangle and the original triangle is in a 1 to 2 ratio with another triangle, then those two triangles would have to have the same area. This here, there, there's only one double amount of area from triangle 1. You can only, you're going to get one answer if you double any quantity. So if you double this, you get the answer for that, you get the answer for that. So these two would have to be the same. The triangles that do not contain a, a base of a trapezoid have identical areas. They're not congruent, right? They're not similar necessarily unless it's an isosceles trapezoid, but they're going to have the same area. Last question on the bottom, just a little tricky one here to do your conversions and deal with the zeros again too. Pretty sure this is right. Hopefully I got it right here. On a map of uh, California, one centimeter corresponds to 50 kilometers. Find the ratio of the map's area to the actual area of, of California. So this really puts in perspective how giant our state is. So first step on this one, we needed to change 50 kilometers to centimeters because this is a unit here, a single unit, one unit centimeters. Um, and so we need to change it to those units. No reason to change this one to decimal. So 50 kilometers would be 50,000 meters. So this is how I do this, 50,000 meters. So I did 50 kilometers, then added three zeros because it's 50,000. And then uh, once I have meters, there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So I added two more zeros. Got to square them both. Okay, one square is easy, that's just one. But um, we're looking at, what, 5 million? 5 million squared, right? 5 million times 5 million, that's a huge number, okay? So we just have six zeros. If we're going to square it here, it would become 12 zeros. So 12 zeros bring us to the trillion place. So this here, uh, uh, map, what it's telling us here is a map would be in a 1 to 25 trillion ratio in terms of the area that California takes up on that map compared to the area that California really takes up on the globe. So one in 25 trillion. Started writing triangle there, because I'm so used to writing triangle. Oftentimes do not write trillion so often. I wish I did, I wish I had that much money. That'd be nice, I, I, got, I got two trillion bucks. But hey, I'd be asked to bail out the uh, US economy. Here's your homework, uh, shouldn't be too bad. Um, this is day one of two of this. We'll do kind of a wrap up type lecture practice tomorrow, we'll give you problems on the self-test tomorrow, and a little more problems from this section. And then 
Monday will be kind of a little bit more light because we just need to review chapter nine and I'm mostly just gonna give you some sections to look at, brush up and make sure you feel 100% on it. So reach out to me if you have any questions. We'll review this homework on the Zoom call tomorrow. Take care guys, bye. Nothing will drive them away. Just for one day. You can be heroes. Just for one day.